Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MS Safety webcast. In this video, we will see the steps on how to enable PowerShell remoting using grip policy. PowerShell remoting is enabled by default on Windows Server platforms. You can use enable-ps remoting to enable PowerShell remoting on other supported versions of Windows and to re-enable remoting if it becomes disabled. If you only need to enable PS remoting on a single computer, you can quickly do so by running the PowerShell same delete enable-ps remoting. But for multiple computers, it is recommended to use grip policy. For this demo, we have single domain active directory forest name msftwebcast.com. We have two VMs running in Oracle VM VirtualBox. This is a Windows Server 2022 domain controller. We have another domain join Windows 10 VM. Log on to a Windows Server 2022 domain controller using a domain administrator account. I have created one OU named Taste Computers. I have stored the Taste Computer account under this OU. We will link the group policy object to this OU and later check its result on this Windows 10 computer. To create a new group policy object, we need to launch the group policy management console. From the Server Manager's tool menu, select Group Policy Management. Right-click the Group Policy Objects and select New. You will be prompted for a name for this new Group Policy object. I have entered name Enable PowerShell Remoting for Clients. Click OK. Now let's edit the Group Policy settings that used to enable PowerShell Remoting. Right-click the newly created GPO and select Edit. Maximize the Group Policy Editor window. Go to Computer Configuration, Policies, Administrative Templates, Windows Components and then click on Windows Remote Management. Expand Windows Remote Management and click on WinRM Service. WinRM is a service that PowerShell uses for remote sessions. WinRM can be configured as a client or service depending on the role the host is going to have in a PowerShell connection. At this point, we can enable different authentication types, specify the trusted host, enable HTTP or HTTPS listener and so on. Find the setting, allow remote server management through WinRM and double click on it. Select enable. For the IP version 4 and IP version 6 filter, you can supply an IP address range or you can use an asterisk to allow all IP addresses. Here, I'm going to enter the IP address range of our local network for testing purpose. Type the IP version 4 address range 172.1872.0 hyphen 172.1872.255. This means anyone from our local subnet can connect to targeted computers. If you don't specify anything under IP version 6 filter, that means we are not going to use IP version 6 for Windows remote management. Click on apply and OK to save the changes. Next, let's enable the Windows firewall. Under computer configuration, expand policies, expand Windows settings, Click on Security Settings and then click on Windows Defender Firewall with Advanced Security. Expand Windows Defender Firewall and click on Inbound Rules. Right click the Inbound Rules and select New Rule. Select Predefined and select Windows Remote Management from the drop down menu. Click Next. Uncheck the Public Profile Rule. This rule will be only applicable for domain and private profile. Click Next to continue. Leave Allow the connection enabled and click on Finish to create the new rule in the Windows Defender Firewall. Let's make this rule a little more secure. Right now, the rule allow connection from any IP address on the domain and private profile. Let's restrict the connection to our domain controller only 
and remove the private profile altogether. Right click the rule and select properties. Go to scope tab and remote IP address choose these IP addresses. Click add to add the IP address of our domain controller. Tap the domain controller's IP address and click OK. Next, go to advanced tab. Unselect private profile. Make sure only domain profile is selected. Click apply and OK. WinRM service runs automatically by default in the latest versions of Windows Server. However, this is not the case with Windows client computers. Let's start the service and change the startup type using group policy. Navigate to Computer Configuration, Policies, Preferences, Control Panel Settings and click on Services. Right click in the Services window, click New and click on Service. Change Startup to automatically delayed start. Click the ellipsis button with the three dots next to the service name. Find and select service name WinRM. Windows Remote Management. Select the WinRM service. Select Start Service from the Service Action menu. Go to Recovery tab. Select Restart the Service Action for First Failure, Second Failure and Subsequent Failures. Click Apply and OK. At this point, we have configured all required group policy settings to enable PowerShell remoting. Close the Group Policy Management Editor. Right click on Start menu and select Windows PowerShell Admin. Try to connect to a remote Windows 10 computer using Windows Remote Management. Type cmdelete test wsman win 10 cli01. Here, win 10 cli01 is the host name of our Windows 10 client computer. Press Enter key to run the command. Surely, we are going to receive an error as WinRM is currently not enabled on Windows 10 computer. As expected, we have received an error message. Let's link the GPU to targeted OU. Go back to GPMC. Right click the test computer's OU and select link an existing GPU. Select enable PowerShell remoting for client's GPU and click OK. The GPU is now linked with our test computer's OU. Once Windows 10 computer apply the new group policy settings, our environment will be ready for Windows remote management. Let's go to Windows 10 client computer. On this computer, already we have signed in using the user account of Deepak Patel. Open run menu, type cmd and hit enter key. Type command gp update slash force and hit enter key to manually update the group policy settings on this Windows 10 computer. The group policy update has completed successfully. Now I'm going to restart this Windows 10 computer to apply the group policy settings correctly. Okay, our Windows 10 computer has been restarted successfully. Let's go back to our domain controller. Go to PowerShell console. Again, try to connect to our remote Windows 10 computer via WinRM. Type cmdelete test wsman win 10 cli01. Here, win 10 cli01 is host name of our Windows 10 client computer. Press Enter key to run the command. If WinRM is enabled on the remote computer, you will receive this response in PowerShell. Then you may try to connect to a remote computer interactively using PowerShell remoting. Type cmdelete enter hyphen ps session. Then you have to specify the host name or IP address of the remote computer. In our case, the cmdelete will be enter hyphen ps session win 10 hyphen cli01. Hit enter key to run the command. The connection is successfully established and the PS console of the remote computer appears in Windows PowerShell. Type cmdelete $env call in computer name and hit enter key to find the host name of the connected computer. We can confirm it is Windows 10-CLI01. 
We can also run commands from this Windows PowerShell. For example, let's run command ipconfig slash all. Here we can see the IP address of that Windows 10 client computer is 172.18.72.62. Let's type cmdelete get hyphen net tcp connections and press enter key. We can see the established connection from our domain controller to this computer on TCP port 5985, which is currently being used by PowerShell for PowerShell remoting. So we can confirm that we have successfully enabled PowerShell remoting on this Windows 10 computer using group policy. That's all for the video on how to enable PowerShell remoting using group policy in Windows Server Active Directory. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions and suggestions regarding this video, please let me know in the comments section. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.